Hi everyone, welcome to week four. So this week in class, we talked about ear, nose, mouth, and throat. So this week we will be adding on to what you already know by adding the assessments of the ear, nose, mouth, and throat. So like we talked about in class, a lot of times when we're doing this, we'll mainly be inspecting, we will be doing some palpation. When we inspect, we're really going over and looking at alignment, symmetry, as well as skin. If we're looking at skin skin, then I, you will hear me say common phrases like appropriate toughness with pink undertones and no redness, swelling, lesions, or exudate. Whenever we're talking about mucous membranes though, I will say they're pink, moist, and intact. So it does, the vernacular, the words that you use will change a little bit. So for this week, you will be doing the ears, nose, as well as the mouth. And then I really encourage you, because next week is the last week that we will be adding on content, we'll be adding on cardiac and respiratory, which are some heavier content areas. It's really important that you feel comfortable with what we've learned so far. So once you have mastered and once you have checked off on the things for this week, I really encourage you to start back at the beginning of the head to chest and start going through AIDIT, the general survey, skin and nails, head and face, as well as the neck with the lymph nodes, and then the eyes and adding on ears, nose, and mouth, what we've discussed this week. Because if you can feel really good doing all of those together so far, then when you go to add cardiac and respiratory next week, it will not feel as overwhelming. So once you've checked off on the things for this week, grab out that head to chest and start practicing and start putting it all together and getting the flow and getting it down to memorization. So this week when we were doing the ears, so I'm going to be looking at the ears. Like I said, we like symmetry. We also like alignment. So I'm looking at the ears and the ears appear to be symmetric. Also, when I'm looking at their alignment, their alignment, the top of the pin aligns up to the outer canvas of the eye. Now I'm going to look at the skin. When I'm looking at the skin, I don't see any redness, swelling, lesions, or exudate. I also don't see any piercings. And so that's looking on the external ear. Now I'm gonna gaze down the external auditory medius, which is our fancy word for the ear canal. And again, I don't see any redness, swelling, lesions, or exudate, nor do I see any cerumen. Now I'm gonna look behind the ear and I don't see any skin breakdown, redness, swelling, lesions, or exudate. If I would like at this point, I could go and inspect the other side, as long as you always inspect first. Uh, while I'm on this side though, I'm gonna go ahead and do my palpation. So I already did all my inspections, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to palpate the tragus, and I'm going to palpate behind the ear and ask my patient, do you have any tenderness? The patient says, no, I will say no tenderness noted. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side. So I already spoke to my alignment and the symmetry, and I'm looking at this ear, I'm looking at the skin, I don't see any uh, piercings on this ear. I also, the skin color is appropriate to finish with pink undertones. I don't see any redness, swelling, lesions, or exudate. Now I'm gonna look down the external auditory meatus. I don't see any redness, swelling, lesions, or exudate. I also don't see any sermon impaction. I'm gonna look behind the ear. I don't see any skin breakdown. And then I'm gonna go ahead and palpate the tragus. I'm gonna palpate behind the ear. And the patient states they don't have any tenderness, so no tenderness is noted. I could also go ahead and ask the patient, if my patient has been responding to my questions, then I know that they can hear me. Conversational speech is intact. Uh, you can also practice what we've talked about this week in class, the whisper test, but that is optional for this week uh, as far as to practice, and I'll demonstrate that at the end of this video. And then you could also do the two tuning fork tests, the Weber test and the Rennie test, which are further explorations into hearing if you notice that conversational speech is an issue. Also, I'm going to ask my patient, uh, how do you clean your ears? Hopefully the patient does not speak Q-tips. Luckily I have a very good patient and my patient uh, utilizes in the shower, they let water run through and if it seems to be an issue, they use uh, Debrox ointment. Uh, and then also I'm gonna ask my patient, do you have any exposure to environmental noise? And the patient states no. Now I'm gonna move on to my patient's nose. So again, when I'm looking at the nose, like I said, I want symmetry and alignment. My patient's nose appears to be midline. It is proportionate to the rest of the facial features and it also appears to be symmetric. When I'm looking at the external nose, there's no redness, swelling, lesions, or exudate, and also there's no piercings. Now I'm gonna look up my patient's nose. Since this is nasal mucosa, I want it to be pink, moist, and intact, but I don't see any discharge or any exudate. Also, when I'm looking up 
and I look at my patient's septum. The septum appears to be thin line, so there's no septal deviation. Next, I would ask the patient to occlude one nostril and breathe in, occlude the other nostril and breathe in. And if the patient has no issues with inhalation of each nostril, then I will state, nares are patent bilaterally. Now I'm gonna go on to my patient's mouth. So looking at the patient's lips, they are pink, moist, and intact. Looking inside my patient's mouth, the gums are pink, moist, and intact. The buccal mucosa is pink, moist, and intact. Looking at the tongue, the tongue is pink, moist, and intact. The dorsal side has rough papillae, and the ventral side is smooth and glossy. Now I'm gonna look up at my patient's hard and soft palate. They're both pink, moist, and intact. The hard palate has a little bit of a grayish tinge. The soft palate has a little bit of a yellowish tinge. Now I'm gonna have my patient open up wide. I could use a tongue blade. Look at the back of my patient's throat, the posterior pharyngeal wall. It is pink, moist, and intact. The tonsils are pink, moist, and intact. They are one plus with crips. And then I'm gonna have my patient open up their mouth and say, ah, uh, ah, uh, and I'm looking at the uvula. The uvula rises with phonation. Since the uvula rises with phonation and there's no pooling of saliva in the back of the throat, that means that cranial nerves nine and 10 are intact. And so that completes my ears, nose, and mouth assessment. So next what I will show you, what you will see in uh, on the optional things to look at, First, you have the whisper test. So for the whisper test, you will want to stand, I'm gonna to go to the other side. You will stand behind the patient, arms length away. You will have them occlude one ear, so they would occlude by pressing their tragus, because remember, we don't want them putting their finger inside of their ear. So you'd have them occlude one ear, and you will whisper two words. Happy Tuesday. And then you'd ask them to repeat those words. Then you have them do the same thing on the other side, so you're still standing arms length away, and you will have them occlude the other ear. It's a and if they repeat those words, you will state whisper sounds heard bilaterally. So uh, since whisper sounds are heard bilaterally, then cranial nerve eight is intact. If you wanted to do the Romberg test, you'd have the patient stand up, and the Romberg test would be to test balance and equilibrium. When you have the patient stand up, they would stand with their feet almost together and have them close their eyes. When they do that, you don't want them swaying, you don't want them losing their balance or hitting the floor. So we always hold our arms out just in case our patient does sway or look like they're gonna lose their balance. So we are there to catch them uh, and sort of guide them in that uh, fall. Hopefully they do not. If they do not sway, lose their balance or the floor, then Romberg is negative. Negative is normal. Romberg positive would indicate that there's some type of issue with equilibrium. So if Romberg is negative and if whisper sounds when you're standing behind are heard bilaterally, then cranial nerve eight is intact. You could also practice the tuning fork tests. However, the tuning fork tests are not in uh, this week's, or are not in the head to chest, and they're just optional for you to practice. With the tuning fork test, you wanna hold the tuning fork at the bottom. You don't wanna hold onto the tongs because it would stop the vibrations. If you were doing the Weber test, you would place it in the middle of the patient's head and ask them, can you hear the sounds equally in both ears? If they can hear the sounds equally in both ears, then that would indicate that hearing is intact. If they hear the sound more on one side or the other, then that would indicate an abnormal finding, and you would want to send them on for further testing so it could be determined if they have a sensory neural or conductive hearing loss. For the Rennie test, the Rennie test, there's two parts, and you'd want to make sure that you're wearing a watch with a second hand on it. You'd have your patient tell you when the sound stops. So you would hit it, place it on their mastoid process to account for bone conduction, and be watching the clock, timing your patient, once they see the sound stops, then you will move it and hold it in front of the air and continue watching the clock. A normal finding would be that air conduction is two times longer than bone conduction. And you would repeat the same thing on the other side. So if air conduction takes two times longer than bone conduction, then cranial nerve eight is intact. Another optional thing that you can practice today is you could practice cranial nerve 12. You could have the patient say light tight dynamite. If the patient can say light type dynamite, then the tongue can move in all the directions that we care about, and cranial nerve 12 is intact. If you don't want to do light type dynamite, you could also have your patient stick their tongue out. If they stick their tongue out, remember we like symmetry, so we want it to be midline. If they stick their tongue out and there's any tremors, so shaking or deviation, where instead of being midline, that pulls to one side, that could indicate that they have potentially had a stroke. With a stroke, it would pull to the strong side. And we would also see the uvula emulate the same thing. And again, those are optional because that is not on your head to chest. 
but I really encourage you uh, to practice them so that way you feel better about them if you see it on, um, on an examination. And then also go ahead and start practicing your head to chest, what you know so far, which is almost all of it. And that's it for week five or week four. And uh, if you get extra time in the lab, your lab instructor may guide you through some of the components of week five to give you a head start. Have a great day.